Now, it's time for your weekly dose of sports and showbiz. And I'm delighted to have our very own sports guru, Aidan McGee, and showbiz journalist Hayley Palmer with me in the studio. Go, very good morning to you both. Great okay, to Liz, see lovely you. Lovely to have you here. Yeah, this is a bit different, isn't it? Nice. Yeah, this is lovely. lovely. Really good to see <laughs> you both. Where should we begin? Should we start with showbiz? Let's start showbiz because I'm a celebrity. Have you been watching We've it? We've got yeah, to talk yeah, about it, yes. We have to talk about it. I'm absolutely hooked. But I have to say <laughs> that Nella Rose, for me, I'm finding her very uncomfortable to watch. Mm. Um, this but that's week... what she's there for, isn't she? Just to wind people up? Well, not necessarily. I mean, she's a YouTube star. I actually hadn't heard of her. <laughs> but... She's not that much of a star. No, but she's, you know, she's gone in there. I tried to give her a chance, but mm. every time I'm like, oh, no, I've, I can't watch it. I couldn't watch it when she was saying that to Fred, the comment... Um, in the week, I know it was really highlighted in the press. And for me, she's ruining it, actually, for me. I, I can't watch it because of her, because she's just... Are you going to give up on it? No, I'm not going to give series. up on it, because I'm not like that, but I'm going to stay just with she it. Gets voted out? I'm hoping she's going to get voted out first, <laughs> yeah. And I think that could happen now, Hayley, because she went in as one of the favourites, and yeah. she's really quickly come down the ranks, because she just wants to fight with everyone, it seems. Yeah, exactly. And, I mean, you know what? I, I, I can see she's got a lot of hurt, and I do feel mm. for her that she's lost her parents, and, you know, I do understand understand that but I do think that when you're going into the jungle it is a team effort and you you have to get on with people and it's, it's a mindset as well and everybody else seems to be fine but she's just winding it up every night and uh yeah so for me I would like to see her get voted out first harsh but fair. Hayley, Hayley just, you've charted the career of a lot of these people over the years do you think she will regret <laughs> the way she's behaved now when she looks back in 10 years' time? Yeah, maybe, because I think she's in the moment. And obviously, emotions are high. You know, you're not eating properly, you're not sleeping properly, you're getting cold and wet. I wouldn't be very good either. No. But <laughs> I think when she comes out and watches back, she probably will go, oh, do you know what? It was a bit overdramatic. That's what I think. Who do you think is doing well, Hayley? Who is surprising you in the jungle? I love Sam Thompson. Yeah. I just think he's like a little golden retriever puppy. <laughs> and he's, he's just beautiful. And he's so endearing. He does have ADHD, um, so he, you know, he has a lot of energy, but he's so giving and he's such a people person, he's so endearing that I'd love to see him go all the way. Yeah, I think I'm with you on this, Hayley. I think Sam's going to do really well. And we can't talk about I'm a Celebrity without talking about Nigel. How do we think Nigel's doing? I think he's coming across really well. Do you? Yeah. He's looking very trim as well. Oh, I've seen too much of Nigel Farrar. <laughs> yeah. Looking far too much. I know, I was a bit shocked. I was like, oh, OK. Oh, I, think he's away, coming across, Nigel. I think he's coming across really, really Really well, I, 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 he's hugely charismatic, and he got four million votes in that election, so people like him. Mm. So I wasn't, I wasn't surprised to me whatsoever. And over a long haul, you can't, you, you, you get good, it's a, you get a good opportunity there, blank canvas almost to project your personality. And to me, so far, that's exactly what he's done. Yeah, I agree. I think he's gone in there, and when he's got a task, he just gets on about it. That's what I, I like about him. There's no screaming or like, no, I can't do that. He's like, right, what have I got to do? I'm on it, and, I, and he does it. And so. do you think we're seeing the real Nigel, or do you think oh, we've very much got the, the politician Nigel? Oh, we're seeing a bit of both, actually. I think it's quite strategic, isn't it? I mean, I could see him being, uh, being back, in, back on frontline politics again. I mean... You know, you look at the spirit of the times right now and exactly what's happening. I think he's probably needed. Many people would argue that. And he's probably using his platform as well as the money he's got in his back pocket to um, make the most of it. Why yeah, not? I mean, you know, there's a lot of challenges going on at the moment. I'd like to see not so many challenges and actually just hear them talking. That's you just my favourite bit. chat, don't you? I just want the gossip. That's just me. <laughs> you just want to hear the gossip. Right, Aidan, let's have a look in, in the sports world, shall we? Pep Guardiola. Well, yeah, they've got a massive game, biggest game of the season coming up at 12.30 today. They host Liverpool. It's a first against second tie at the top of the Premier League. Now, the backdrop to this, of course, is that they've been going toe-to-toe -to -toe for a number of years. But Manchester City have more pressing problems than we think they might have in the new year. They've had those charges hanging over from February, 115 charges of alleged financial impropriety. Now, the issue here is that Everton received a huge punishment last week. They were deducted mm. 10 points for one charge, being found guilty of one charge of financial impropriety. Manchester City have been found guilty... Oh, sorry, no, they've been charged, rather, with 115. So it begs the question, what on earth is going to happen uh, to them? Is it going to be anything like what happens to, to Everton? But it, well, the context, of course, is that yesterday Pep Guardiola was asked about it, he wasn't happy with the line of questioning. He thought, well, these charges are different to the ones we've got with Everton. And if Manchester City were to get relegated... I'd manage them all the way down in League One, which means they're going to be playing teams like Portsmouth and Gillingham and teams like that, and wow. you can see them down there. And if they drop it... Having said that, Ellie, it's not incumbent on that division. If they, that division doesn't want them, they have to drop as far down as, until they find a division they, could, they do want, so they could be in non-league.
It's possible. Wow, incredible. Uh, let's talk about Nova, Novak Djokovic, shall we, and a drug test scandal. I wouldn't say scandal. No, he was he, he was unhappy that he was he was. No, that's that's, that's, that's definitely overreacting. I shouldn't have written that down in that. In that. Well, that's what I've got here, <laughs> Aidan, and I'm reading it to you. I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I, it was my fault. <laughs> so uh, yeah, he, he was a bit cross that he was sampled. He said he was asked to provide a urine and blood sample right. 90 minutes before his match against Cam Norrie, and it was in the in the public eye over here because it was in the spotlight over here because it was against uh, Team GB. He beat Cam Norrie, of course, but he said it's not. It's not the protocol to do that. He should have had it after the match. The testers said that there wasn't enough time after the match. And he said, well, the testing agency or the doping agency are a private organisation. They do things when they want to do it. They're not taking account of what the players need. And he said if we had our own one, which we could, well, we, we could kind of have a bit more say over the, the scheduling. But nonetheless, it didn't stop him winning. And he's a hugely controversial character these days, isn't he? It's as simple as that. Yes, but you like him, don't you? Oh, I love him. I do. I do. I like a controversial character. You, know? you do? Like, that's why yeah. I like Hayley. Whereas <laughs> I, like Cam, I've got, I like Cam Norrie. Yeah, I've like got a soft spot yeah. for Cam. Yeah, why not? Why not? He's good. Very oh, good. He's good. We'll see what he can do this summer. Yeah, let's keep our eyes peeled on that. Um, Hayley, need to talk to you. The big story of the week is Girls Loud and their comeback. I am so happy about this, Ellie. Yes. After 10 years, they are reuniting, obviously without Sarah. And I know that the tour that they're doing is a celebration of her life. Uh, but it's really exciting. I love it when bands get back together. They I went, all do, don't they? They all eventually. do it. I went to see S Club. I took Mark along. He had Did to you? miss the Rugby uh, World Cup final to come along and see S Club. But he secretly enjoyed it. And it's just great because it's... The memories you get of those songs, you're like, it reminds you of your youth. <laughs> yeah, do you know what? It's so sad that you talk about S Club. Obviously, they're doing it without Paul. Yeah. And Girls Aloud doing it without Sarah. It's so bittersweet, isn't it? It really is. Uh, and I am a massive Girls Aloud fan and I followed their whole journey. So um, I do feel upset about that. And it must be very hard for the girls as well to get on stage mm. and just be like, actually, you know, she's missing. Yeah. Um, but I know that Sarah had spoken to Cheryl before she died and had said, actually, I want you girls to go ahead. So uh, I had seen an interview where Cheryl uh, had said that. So they obviously oh. feel like it's the right thing to do. And it's a huge tour now that yes, they're embarking on. I'm going to try and get tickets. It's May and June. Um, <laughs> in England and Ireland next year. So oh, absolutely. Let's go, Ellie. Well, Aidan, will you be going? Oh, yeah, we absolutely will. Aidan, will you be going? Think, if, Girls if, Loud? If, if Hayley invites me, I think we'll... Uh, you're not invited, so that's <laughs> not going to happen. Right, that's, a, that's a no, then. <laughs> and I think we've just got enough time to talk Christmas telly. Yes. What have we got coming up? We have got Strictly Christmas Special, Christmas Day. This is important. Uh, Danny Cipriani, he's going to be on it. Cipriani. Is it Cipriani? Yes. OK. Yeah, try with QPR. This way you two are very useful for each other. Very OK, <laughs> OK. Aidan's actually been helpful. <laughs> uh, Keisha from the Sugar Babes, she's going to be doing it as well. Who? Keisha oh, from the yes, Sugar Babes. Yeah. So that I like her. So that's the lineup so far. So it's different celebrities for the Christmas special, uh, which is really exciting. Gavin and Stacey, I thought there was going to be a new one. No, yeah, me too. No. Oh. I looked it up last night, I couldn't see it. That's broken my heart because mm. I am the biggest Gavin and Face Stacey Gavin fan. and Facey. <laughs> I'm Gavin and Facey. I've lost my way now. And anyway, <laughs> uh, Love Actually, by the way, is returned to the cinemas. Oh, um, so my you can go and see that. Film yes. All time. Loads to look forward to. Hayley, you've been amazing. Aidan, thank you so much. Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> and thanks for joining me. Lots coming up on GB News this afternoon. Dawn Neeson is up next. <laughs>